this crowd. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to make sure if anybody has not filled out a slip over here, please uh, fill one out over there. I'll be happy to drop it in the bucket here for the drawings. Is the red cross that motorcycle? No.
Yeah. Simple, uh, more moderate weight, but again, it's it's beating. Okay. Now, <coughs> before I I'm digging into jumbo over here, the swing that I just demonstrated is the basis. Okay, that's where it all kind of begins with dynamic work. Okay, what ends up coming into play. <coughs> Okay, and it was, a lot of people think you need a tremendous amount of upper body strength to do that, and it's really just momentum and drive from your lower body, so <laughs> that one's about 35 pounds, same thing, okay, so it's hip drive. It's <clears throat> getting your lower body, your glutes, your core, your hips into activation. Okay? So last. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <clears throat> the thing is, and a lot of folks always ask, you know, do you really iron grip, you know, these kettlebells? And the answer is no. The last thing you want to do is Lock in so tight that you have no ability to move, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. give you an idea of how that works, it's weight transfer, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me, the, as you are pulling the kettlebell back and driving yourself forward, okay, keeping your back straight, your hips, your hamstrings are driving through to drive that weight. Now as you're coming back down, or the eccentric, you know, the, the generally speaking, people want to let it drop. And the idea behind that is, is you still have some kind of sense of control through your lower back, through your hips, and through your glutes, so that as that weight comes here, 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 you break your hitch, all that emphasis is here, and here, not here, in your lower back, where obviously swinging something that heavy could hurt you. Okay, so there's, it's really technique, I guess is the point. So it takes a lot of repetition and practice to kind of bring it through. Now, let's see, yeah, probably should be all right. So, give you an idea. That momentum. Okay, so as you can see, you can generate an immense amount of power and speed as you drag and take it up. Now, some other variations. Okay, so. Heart's beating fast. The idea behind this process is again trying to generate as much speed, balance, and power through your lower body. Now, last thing I put 
put on the table here. I should get a volunteer. Volunteer Dan. Marco has. No. <laughs> no. How about Haley? Come on over. We're not going to do anything crazy. Come on over. Okay. <laughs> so, again, come here. One foot on, please. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> what everyone likes to think about when you involve balance into a, a setup is that you're going to fall and hurt yourself, but legitimately, in this case, you're one inch off the ground. Okay? So, one of the things that we stress around here is getting your body in alignment and form so you don't hurt yourself. <laughs> and as you get in this position, okay, what I want you to do. She was hoping you Okay, you notice how her back maintains nice, straight, flat alignment. Come on up. Good. Come on up. See how simple that was? Come on up. Okay. In that, in that position, yeah, it's just simple. The idea behind it is, is that I'm trying to kind of get across that with no stress, nothing else, up on a balance beam, okay, to be able to Get yourself into alignment is not that easy. You're, you have to work several different muscle groups to put yourself in that position. Now, adding in a simple stressor, okay, which pretty much everybody in here has used these. This is a fairly light band, okay. I'm gonna come up on the balance beam with it, <coughs> like so. Now we're going to add in quite a bit of tension to that particular stressor. I hope I don't fall now, so <laughs> it's okay if I do. Anyway, the idea behind it now <clears throat> actually, Haley did them on Thursday already. So the idea behind that is that this. As you keep lengthening it, it's creating opposite tension from your foot that you're balancing. Your muscle goals in this case are to get yourself into a point where you have double tension, where you have tension on both sides and your body is keeping you in balance. So, any questions? Wow, really? Interesting to hear. Tell me how, how heavy is this biggest ball? It's 75 pounds. 75 pounds. And uh, although I've never picked one up, I've seen them as heavy uh, from some of the folks that I've dealt with in years at 125 pounds. Uh, the heaviest one I've ever used or seen live is about 100. So, so Tony, talk for a couple of seconds just about the different benefits you get as far as strength, balance, stability, cardiovascular, when you swing a kettlebell like that. You know, if you take the same 15 seconds and you're just doing a push-up, for example, on flat hands and in your feet, what's the difference 20 seconds doing that to the 20 seconds doing any just a very simple basic, you know, movement as far as the benefits for the time that you're doing? Okay, Dan, thank you for that question. And Dan exactly drop this right into what the concept of the class that I'm trying to kind of <coughs> play with the idea of. And <coughs> when you do something here, which, as I said at the beginning, the basis of the kettlebell work is the two-handed swing, or the driving of this object through loading the hips and bringing yourself in to work your body. About the only part of your body that does not work during a kettlebell swing is your chest. Everything else is in place. So is you're recruiting, okay, your biggest muscle groups, which are quads, glutes, hamstrings, along with your lower back, okay, the, excuse me, the metabolism benefits are outstanding because you're doing so much more work 
in a condensed amount of time, say 20 to 30 seconds of duration to do 10 to say 20 swings. So combine 10 to 20 swings and then turn around and maybe do 10 jumping jacks followed by 10 push-ups, 30 second rest, two-handed swings again, or switch maybe do a lighter one and go with one-handed swings. The idea behind it is, is muscle recruitment. I, I don't know how many other ways to explain that, but when you get your largest muscles involved in an exercise and you're doing that continuously, your body, your heart is forced to pump that blood into those areas and it you know, creates that stress on your body. In turn, that's where you're getting your benefits. The more stress you're putting on your system in the safest way is going to create the most change. If that answers it. Would you recommend kettlebells for those of us who are a little bit more physically challenged? <laughs> Lee, that is a, a great question. Um, I say, for us. some things, yeah, for, for some things, <laughs> obviously. Okay, so you get to put on the spot here. Okay, so currently, okay, Lee just had knee replacement. Okay, so obviously there's been some major um, scar and damage into that particular area right there. Kettlebells, at least dynamic work, is pretty limited to those that are at a point where they're at least at 80% of their physical capacity, at least for the dynamic type of work like this where you're talking about swings or the snatch, etc. cetera. Um, anything that requires you to get your entire body into a movement like that requires you to have range of motion. And right now, you know, if you can't, you know, bring yourself up, if you don't have enough flexibility to get down, uh, it's dangerous. So you address the flexibility and the strength issues first, and then you obviously don't start with something like that. You start, you know, with a more moderate weight and get your technique <coughs> pure. But until your injuries have kind of satisfied themselves as far as repair, uh, it's certainly not something that you'd want to uh, take the chance with. So we wouldn't do the kettlebells, we would do the kiddie 